I assume my own volume is off on both of them. Good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Board of Directs um, and admin. Hello, everyone. And good, good evening, also community members. Um, tonight, we will start our um, meeting of the holes, our committee meeting of the holes, April 19th, 2022. We're going to call this meeting to order. First thing we're going to do is salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Cuff. I have roll. Thank you. There are no special presentations for tonight. And also, there's no motion for action. So we're going to move to the review of the proposed agenda for business meeting for our business. Meeting. Okay. Um, Mr. Cuff, All right, we're going to start with a community relations. Um, I am going to uh, read tonight's community relations uh, agenda uh, for Miss Richardson. A1, Dr. B. Coates recognized by the Alumni Association of Lincoln University. Eric B. Coates, Dr. Eric B. Coates, superintendent of the William Penn School District, received the 2022 Dr. Frank Tick Coleman Award from the Alumni Association of Lincoln University, Philadelphia chapter. Dr. B. Coates was nominated by a group of his peers and was chosen based on excellence shown to Lincoln University's achievements made in his career and his service to the community. Dr. B. Coates received the award on April 16, 2022 at the Dr. Frank Tick Coleman Luncheon at the Springfield Country Club in Delaware County. Funds raised through the luncheon are used to support book and technology finan financial needs for eligible uh, matriculating Lincoln University students from Philadelphia and surrounding areas. Eight. <laughs> We were going to congratulate you at the end, Renell, but definitely claps to that, Dr. B. Coates, and I'm pretty sure we'll have Board of Directs comment at the end. A2, Pinwood High School Speech and Debate Team qualifies for state tournament. Uh, the Pinwood High School Speech and Debate Team participated in Pennsylvania's 2021 competition, competitions, which occurred virtually. More than 150 Pennsylvania public and private schools are members of the PHSSL. Students compete in district tournaments, which qualify for them for the state competition. In the districts 10 and 15 states qualifier tournament, the top two competitors in each event moved on to the PHSSL, Pennsylvania High School Speech League. State tournament on March 19th and March 2022. Four Pinwood High School students qualified to compete in the 2022 PHSSL State Tournament. Uh, Nyla Miller and Summer Andrews represented Penwood, uh, Penwood in dual interpretation after coming in first place in the district tournament. Naomi Lartney uh, defeated Garnet Valley High School, Harriton High School, and the Haverford School. Naomi represented Penwood in informative speaking with her informative speech on public education funding. Sarah, uh, Sarah Fisher placed second in a district tournament against Unionville High School, um, Conestoga High School, Garnet Valley High School, Harriton High School, and the Haverford School. She represented Pinwood in persuasive speaking with her persuasive speech on COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, Ms. Tashauna Maxwell is the advisor for the speech and debate team. Student members are listed below. Um, the Pennsylvania High School Speech League was founded in 1961 and seeks to stimulate uh, through educational competition and understanding and appreciation of all areas of speech. The organization offers the high school students uh, the opportunity to compete with their peers while developing advanced communication skills. Uh, congratulations to those that are speech and debate team. Um, A3, Pimwa High School mock trial team participants and uh, district competition. The Pinwood High School mock trial team participated in Pennsylvania's 2022 competition, which occurred virtually. In the first district competition, Pinwood won a unanimous decision against Academy of the Notre Dame, Day Namor. Pinwood, 
Pimwood continued to win a hard fought second round against Episcopal Academy in a 2 1 split. Pinwood ultimately lost to uh, Mar um, Marion Mercy Academy in the district semifinals. The mock trial team also competed in the two tournaments, LaSalle University's Blue and Gold Invitational and the University of Pennsylvania Benjamin Franklin Invitational. Uh, Mr. Dan De Alba is the advisor for the mock trial team and the student team members are listed below. Uh, the Pennsylvania Bar Association uh, mock trial competition is one of the largest in the nation. High school students throughout the state uh, as lawyers and witnesses in simulated civil criminal tri trials before actual judges in a jury panel. Uh, mock trials exist to educate students on the judicial system um, and provide students a firsthand opportunity to see the court system in action. Penwood mock trial prides itself on its inclusive, close-knit club environment. Congratulations to our mock trial team as well. Uh, A4 Delaware County Youth Job Fairs. Uh, Delaware County Career Link is hosting two youth job fairs for youth looking for summer jobs, internships, and first job opportunities. More than 30 employers will be on site offering positions that include summer camp teachers and counselors, wait staff ser uh, and servers, lifeguards, banquet servers, swimming instructors, youth program leaders, and more. There will also be a job readiness and resource table to get information on work permits and resume interviewing tips. Uh, interested youth should bring uh, copies of their resume and be prepared for on-site interviews and possible hiring. Uh, the data locations are as followed, April 28th from three to six at the Springfield YMCA, and also uh, May 3rd from four to seven uh, at the Ridley YMCA. So please get that information out there for all our youth that are looking for jobs. Uh, A5, Penwood High School uh, Jewelry Art Show. The Penwood High School Art Department will uh, present its annual jewelry art show this spring under the direction of art instructor, Ms. Alice Grunt and Mr. Uh, Jason uh, Sabari. Uh, this year's artwork will be on display at Penwood High School Green Avenue campus from May 9th through May 19th, 2022 during normal school hours. On Thursday, May 12th, from 6 to 8, a reception and award ceremony will take place. The award ceremony will begin at 7 o'clock at the Green Campus Avenue. Uh, students will exhibit work in the various art media, such as drawing, painting, sculpture, and ceramics. There will be awards for first, second, and third place, place in for, places, for, um, places in four major categories, ceramic, sculpture, sculpture dr uh, drawing, and painting. Also included will will be honorable mention awards during the reception uh, members of the Penwood High School chapter of the National Art Society will demonstrate the various art techniques used to create much of the work uh, on display. Um, also, we have uh, A6, our William Spring, um, William Penn uh, Spring Concerts. Uh, uh, as we see students of the William Penn School District showcase their talents. Uh, we have Monday, May 9th, as you see at the Penwood High School at seven o'clock. Um, Thursday, May 19th um, at six o'clock, we'll be at Walnut. Uh, Tuesday, May 24th at Bell Avenue Elementary. Um, and Tuesday, May 20, 24th also at 7 p.m. at uh, the elementary band spring, con will be the elementary band spring concert. That will be at the Penwood High School uh, Green Avenue campus. Uh, we have A7, a Penwood Foundation Scholarship. Um, this is very important information. Also, as well, the Pinwood Foundation is accepting applications for 2022 scholarships from Pinwood High School seniors. Seniors must visit www.pinwoodfoundation.org for more information and to apply. Uh, application date, deadline is May 6. The scholarships are available as follows: uh, Pinwood Pinwood Foundation scholarship, $500 each. Four will be awarded. Then we have the Penwood uh, Foundation's Thomas and Jane Clark Memorial Scholarship, which is for the value of $500, which one person will be awarded. Uh, the Penwood Foundation Julian V. Falana Business uh, Scholarship is uh, for $500 and three uh, students will be awarded. And then the Penwood Foundation Vito C. Uh, Macri uh, Memorial Scholarship, which is $1,000, which uh, one student will be awarded. Um, and lastly, we have A8, the DCIU Family Programs and Services. Uh, the Delaware County Intermediate Unit 
offers the following programs and service, services free to Delaware County uh, residents through this Delaware County Family Center. Uh, this is with regard to parents as teachers, a home visiting program that provides parents with children um, prenatal, prenatal to five years old uh, with important resources. Also positive parenting classes, a four part uh, parenting workshop that provides parenting <coughs> techniques to deal with everyday parenting issues and concerns. Uh, Project Elect is a 12 month program that provides comprehensive support services to school age pregnant parenting students and monthly family events. Uh, they have evening opportunities for families to come together in the community to learn and enjoy family time and also informational and referral. Uh, the Family Center has an extensive network of resources for uh, families seeking help. So we just ask that everyone, if you know anyone that this could benefit, please make sure that they contact 610-532-2811 um, and also option, you're going to press option two and also um, visit the www.dciu.org slash family center. Once again, these are free resources. Please take um, note of that as well. So that concludes my, uh, well, uh, Ms. Richardson's <laughs> community relations agenda for tonight. Thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Richardson. Now we're gonna go um, to our um, education agenda. Uh, Ms. Valerie Cook Henry. Ms. Value there. Oh, you're on mute. She's trying. Oh, never mind. She knows. Sorry. <laughs> My computer decided to act um, temperamental. But good evening, everyone. Um, the Education Committee would like to provide its report the one release and settlement agreement. And the motion will be to approve the terms of the release and settlement agree agreement negotiated between William Penn School District and the parent of student number 04252026 Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Val. Does any board of members have any questions at this time? All right. Oh, anyone from the public have a question with regard to the education agenda? Okay. Hearing none and seeing none, we're going to move on to um, item C, our personnel committee agenda will be presented by Ms. Wadia Ivory. Good evening, everyone. The superintendent recommends the following personnel actions. C1, resignations. C2, appointments. C3, leaves of absence. C4, miscellaneous appointments. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Ivory. Um, are any board of directors have any comments or questions with regarding to the personnel agenda? At this time, yes, Jen. Uh, on page 14. Page 14. Yes, yeah, senior class advisor. Is there another one? I imagine this is a pretty important time for the seniors to lose their advisor. Hi, Jen. So yep. is, that, is that a change? That's a resignation. Oh, okay, yes. So there were two. Um, one resigned, and the other is continuing on for the remainder of the school year. Thank you very much. Of course. Excuse me. Are there any questions from the public at this time? No? All right. And seeing none. All right, we're going to go, go on to our um, D property committee agenda. Uh, Mr. Tom. Thank you, President Boykin. You're welcome. D1, contracted services, fourth year renewal of food service <coughs> management company. The motion is to contract with Aramark Educational Services LLC as the food service management company for the William Penn School District for a fourth year renewal beginning July 1, 2022 and ending June 30, 2023. The contract is subject to PDE approval. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tong. At this moment, the, at this time, does any board of directors have any questions or comments? Oh, yes. Mr. Wright. 
who is the supervisor do we have the same supervisor for uh, for the, the contracting service that we the contracting food services yes. saying has the food for, has for food services eric cobalt so so he's new no no he's mr. been here for a while mr wadley what is his position so there's two sides so mr wadley supervises the maintenance and operations okay this is for food service eric cobalt okay. supervises the food service component. all right thank you mm -hmm. The question um, I had, because I know we're at this time again where we're voting on, you know, food services and then we use Airmark for other things as well. Um, before when we talked about this, we had like certain metrics and things that we wanted to make sure that Airmark hit and, and uh, different things as far as target items. Well, our expectation from our district, um, are we meeting those target items? Are they meeting expectations at this time, our food service? For food service, yes. I mean, yes, answer your question. Okay. So I just, I think that we should start having some type of um, like metric to be able to monitor the monitor monitor the food services as well. Like at least once a year, know how they're doing. Um, are they meeting our expectations? Do they have any certain goals that they need to need to meet? Um, if we can start doing that, that would be great because, you know, when it comes down to bidding, we should be able to use that type of stuff when it comes down to bidding. So um, same thing like we do for maintenance. Mm -hmm. We want to start doing that as well. Sure. All right. So next year, food service will go out to bid next year yeah. as part of the PDE process. Okay. So we can we can look at that next year when the time comes up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or can we, but if we vote on them for this year, can we set some type of metric now though to see how they're going to do for the, you know? Sure. I mean, you know what Go I'm saying? Forward. So yes. when it comes down to bidding, we can say, okay, they met this target area, this target area. So well, well, yes, answer your question, yes. Okay. okay. And Mr. Cobalt has metrics that he works with internally as just a part of his business? Correct. Yeah, yes, the business has to have it, but also as a, as a district, we have expectations too. So I think that we also should look at, even though the business has expectations, we should say, what about the requirements and needs that we need too? Right, but I think if you looked at his his list, mm -hmm. you can get your list from that list. Okay. So, oh, you collect this. I'd like to see this list. Okay. Has have he provided that to you? Um, I think in the past that I mean he could give us. I can. Okay. He can provide it. Okay. okay. How many okay. meals serve? Mm -hmm. What you know? What kind of extra stuff? I guess like. You know, to add, I remember in the past, they just make presentation to the board. Are they still doing that? Or, or when did they come here for the bid, did they make the presentation with the board or who did they make the so presentation? So food service operates slightly different. It's not a presentation to the board. Actually, everything's run through PDE is uh, how that goes. So food service does meet with management. They meet with me every month to go over what, they, what they've done, their numbers and so forth. So, yeah. so, so the PDE bit is slightly different from a regular RFP or a regular bit. And I, I understand that. I just want to make sure that, like, are we getting the best? You know sure. what I'm saying? Know. Yeah, that's a great okay. question. You had your hand up? I have a question. Yeah. Why, does, why don't the parents get a menu to see what the kids are eating? They should receive a menu. I believe there should be, no, all should, should be online, if I'm correct. The, the menus are posted on our website as well. Our website. It should be on each individual school's um, website. Because I haven't gotten the menu. And I, as a parent, I think y'all should incorporate your parents in picking out the menu. Like, they should have some say so for kids. Like, something that they can choose from. Because that's where they eat the same thing all the time. Right. You can only eat so much pizza and chicken patties and all that stuff. So. Right. And, and part of what they're doing, part of what happens when you're part of the, the food program, USDA, you're guided by certain nutritional things that they have to submit in that we get audited on. So that they follow a strict guideline with the menu as well. Yeah. But it, it should, it, well, it's I, your question, I, it should I, be I, on I the website. That, but I'm gonna say this, I got kids at the DCI level and the parents are involved with picking the menu or taking things yeah. off the menu, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions or comments? Yeah, around that, that? I have a question. Oh no, it's dad run around. We can hear you, idea. Okay, it's not around that. It's at another question. So I can wait if anyone else has a question about the contract. I can wait until they're all done. No, no one else has a question about the contract. You have the floor. Okay, so my question is looking at our, for the property committee agenda, at our last property committee meeting, 
um, we were supposed to be looking at um, voting on the beginning phase of, of updating our HVAC system and her field. And I don't see it on the agenda. So I'm just curious what happened with that. So at our last meeting, we had discussed, we were tabled at, we were going to continue discussion at the next meeting. So until we have this consensus, we really don't have anywhere to go. Okay, so are so we're so at what point did we table Curfield? Because Curfield that the last at the last meeting, Curfield was not the part that was being tabled. It was the addition. It wasn't the HVAC system. It was the addition to the properties. So, as far as I know, we tabled it when we discussed, and we're. We have not yet addressed any of these items. We will address them at our next property meeting. Okay, so I'm just curious, Jan, what meeting? Because the last part, can any, if anyone could look back at the tape, because we didn't table Curfield nor HVAC. The only table was, the only discussion was the additions. And I also would um, concur that we were supposed to have a motion prepared. There was no motion prepared because we did not have consensus at our last meeting. And there was supposed to be a reach out to all members. Correct, and I'm still reaching out to all members. Also, um, I just wanna, with, with this, um, just to add, I wasn't able to state this at the last property meeting. Um, just board of directs, make sure you communicate with one another. Make sure you take the time to call each other. We're not gonna always agree on everything. And this decision with our this property, we, it's a big decision for us. You know, so it's best that we talk to one another, we call each other, you know, try your best not to be, um, you know, when you're having your, con your conversations, be straightforward with your conversations to one another. And I just have to say that because we're, we have to make a decision on this soon and we know in order to get this started, but we also have to understand we're not gonna please everyone. We're not gonna please everyone, but we can come together and talk about it. So I just ask within these next weeks, um, when is our next property meeting? Uh, May 3rd. Our next property meeting is May 3rd. So Tuesday, May 3rd. In that time being, I just ask all board of directors, take the time to call one another. Really sit down to discuss this. You know, don't have meetings where it's like three people talking, talk to one another, call one another up and, and get an understanding of what's needed so we can come together on this. My question is by May 3rd, if there isn't a consensus, then what? We're still holding off? We're not moving forward? So it's not a consensus that we need, is that correct? So one thing I wanted to say, I, uh, Ms. Val, a uh, curfew was approved. Correct. So, so I just wanted to let you know, because I, I don't know if I misheard, but Curfield was approved. Um, so we're trying to agree right now on these renovations. And also, as we know, we have to get elevators in East Lansdowne as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about all buildings becoming ADA compliant. There's just certain conversations we all must have. Um, to get this to move forward. I'm just asking um, for board of directors to talk to one another. Now, Dr. B. Coates and Mr. Tong, I do have that question as well. As she stated, if we do not come to a consensus um, by May 3rd, uh, what happens in that case? So if, I'm sorry, if I may, uh, when you say consensus, I, I assume that meant a consensus among the, the, the property committee itself to make a recommendation to the board as a whole. Is, is that a fair statement? Ms. Val, is that what you're referring to? I'm not sure what Jan was referring to. So if that is the case, then um, that would add clarity to this conversation. What I, what I was, when I stated it, what I was say, stating was um, if we're going with the renovations or not, or we're going with just going ADA compliant, there were a few options that from that meeting that we left with on the table. Correct. So what I'm saying is, is that who's with what option, and then Mr. Tom will get that consensus and then bring it back to the board so we can vote on it. And to, oh, and yeah. to go back to your question, Ms. Boykins, um, I believe in Jeff, please correct me if I'm wrong, time is of the essence. And so I would say that we need to definitely define a plan of action no later than next month. 
um, because I believe that's what we've been communicated by uh, KCBA as well. Okay, so I hope everyone heard um, Dr. B. Coates clear. He said by next month. So we have some work to do with calling one another. Um, and Mr. Tong, if you need my help, whatever you need, but we need to sit down and make sure that we're all on the, you know, the same, same accord with this. And can I just ask, for, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I just wanted to- No, ask, go ahead, continue. I just wanted to ask for clarification. Are we then suggesting that the property meeting be a voting meeting? And you would want to do it then, or would you want to do it at, at, the, end the, of May. at the end of May? I'm just asking for clarification. Okay. So we know that this decision has to be made in May. So if everyone, what what does everyone agree on on that? Um, is May 3rd too, too early to make a decision? Okay. If we talk on May 3rd, we could have education be a voting meeting, right? We've done that in the past. We have, we yeah. Away, we so. could, but I would like to talk to Ms. Val with that before we make that Tom. decision. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that May 3rd would be a Time to okay. Okay. That's okay. Good That's fine. Right. I just wanted to make sure right. we were all. On the same Everybody page. good with it? You good with it? Mr. I, I think I would need to, you know, make a recommendation to the board. First. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Can, so, I ask, can, can I ask? Can we have clarity on what was just discussed and concluded? So what was stated was was that um, we know our next property meeting is May third, so we are not going to have May third as a voting meeting. What Jen has suggested was that possibly we could um, vote at an education meeting on it. And what I stated was, well, let's just discuss that with Ms. Val. But as of right now, we know that May 3rd, we will not be voting um, on or making any decision on uh, May 3rd. We will hope that uh, Mr. Tong will be able to come to that meeting to talk about what the options and what options we have and what board of directs have discussed on this matter. Um, and then we will be voting for it in our May business meeting, our end of month May business meeting. Does that bring clarity, uh, Ms. Val? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Wright has a few words. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, uh, Ms. Wadia. I was just asking, um, since, if, since if we have to vote in May on this, is it possible for the property committee to come um, to the table with more than one option during that? So we could possibly, if one was not voted on, could we have more than one option to possibly potentially vote on? If that's possible. So at the property committee, we will discuss the two options at this that were that have so far been presented. Uh, if there are any more uh, additional options, we'll, we'll see if we can put that on the table. But the options currently are uh, HVAC only uh, that was one option that has already been uh, shared with the board. And the second option is a potential expansion of both Evans and um, East Lansdowne. So those are the two options that are currently uh, being debated within the property committee. Uh, a possible option would be um, to add an, uh, uh, an elevator at Bell along with the work that's currently being done at uh, East Lansdowne and Evans. That currently, um, but we will see what we can, what other options we can uh, share at the property committee. Ms. Wadi, would thank you. That that, thank okay. you. That's clarified. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wright. You have the floor. Um, yeah, I just have two questions. One is um, I concur that we, do, that we do need to communicate openly and, and honestly with, with each other. And secondly, I guess. I guess I'm a little concerned. When you say consensus, does that mean unanimous or majority rule? So for our property committee, we need to have some sort of consensus so that we can present a, an option to the board. Yeah, but I mean, is it majority rule or unanimous? I think for, for the board vote, it would be needed a, a majority. Okay, I just wanna make sure that's clear. All right, thank you. All right. Are there any other questions at this time from any other board of directs on this item, or anyone from the public? Yes. You mentioned ADA compliance. That is a separate issue from this stuff. Which is ADA compliance. ADA compliance. That is a separate issue from expansion and the elevator situation. Um. So. Um. So you you want to speak on that? So part of that expansion is to 
<clears throat> part of our renovations is to make sure that our buildings also come into ADA compliance. So some of the components that we're proposing, it would be more, um, <clears throat> it, it, the, how do I put it? The um, solutions would better be suited if we had one option over another option to, to address the ADA uh, issues that we, that we have, ADA compliance issues that we have that are still outstanding in our buildings. For, for instance, an elevator. You know, East Lansdowne has two floors, but it doesn't have an elevator. So in order for us to become ADA compliant, uh, we will put an elevator in there. East Lansdowne has two levels. Yeah, that's, that's just give an example. So you know. All right. Are there any other questions? I think I do have one more. Yes, Mr. Wright. Um, are we including what our curriculum is going to be? Do we do we discuss that? I know the curriculum. With regard I, to? You know, in the problem, what's going to be our curriculum? I know Dr. Beaker was putting in that it would be a STEAM program for curriculum. Oh, OK. Yes. So um, when we talked about STEM with regard to uh, when you presented to discuss that some of our buildings would have STEM. He wants to know what you're talking about with regard that you can present it to the board. Sure, that, <coughs> that information is still, is still under development. I think in our strategic <coughs> plan, Excuse me. it states that I think it says, and I'm, I'm going based off of my memory, um, I think it's by 2025, we would have STEAM focus in each one of our buildings. Yeah. Um, and so we will be working with principals to identify what may be an area of focus for their particular school. So one school may have math, one other school may have arts, et cetera. Um, but that's something that we're looking at. We've also had some general conversations around, do we have a maker space um, in some of our buildings? Uh, I believe two of our buildings have a location for maker spaces. So those are just some preliminary discussions that we are having, but it is uh, a conversation that's underway and in process. I think it's a great idea. I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had, um, I guess it was a question I had. It should have been under probably education. Um, a question was presented about the renaming of um, Hillwood Middle. So it's ninth grade academy that we're going with, correct? The ninth grade academy. That would be. You said I mean, not Hillwood, Hillwood Middle. Middle. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm, I said it incorrectly. Um, our um, Cypress Street campus. Correct, and that's in here. Yeah, um, that's under under new new business. Business. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't that's see okay. it under new business, and I wanted to make sure I made no. um, I asked about it. So I'll bring, bring that up during okay. new business. Right. Sorry about that. That's Moving okay. right along. All right. Are there any more questions with regard to property? All right. So next, we are going to go to our budget and finance agenda. Jen Howe. You have the floor. Uh, E1 Treasures Report, E2 List of Bills, E3 Delaware County Community College 22-23 Budget. I'll read the motion. The motion is to adopt the resolution approving the budget of the Delaware County Community College for the fiscal year July 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 in the form of amounts presenting $89 million, et cetera, dollars. The Penn School District share is $463. Uh, E4 is a contract with Deborah M. Craig, Esquire, for E-rate services for the 21-22 school year to provide a one-year contract with, between the William Penn School District and Deborah M. Craig, Esquire, to uh, provide E-rate services as indicated at a minimum to exceed $25,000. This contract is subject to the district solicitor's review and approval of the form and contract. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board at this time? All right, any questions from the public? All right, hearing or seeing now, we're going to move on to our policy committee agenda presented by Ms. Hopkins. I think she's on. She's here. She just has to unmute herself. She's unable to participate, Monique. 
Okay. Um, so with that being said, I'll read it for her. Um, F1, uh, second reading of amended policy 117. Um, the William Penn School District amended policies have been written by the Board of Direct a board of school directors have been reviewed by the superintendent and the solicitor. Each board member has reviewed a copy of the above named policy for review and follow up discussions. As required by district policy upon approval of the first reading, this policy was entered into the minutes of March 28, 2022, with the second reading and adoption presented for approval at the April business meeting. Uh, policy 117, homebound instruction. The motion is to approve the, the second reading and adoption of the William Penn School District amended policy 117 and to enter such reading into the minutes. F2 is the first reading of the amended policy 103.1. William Penn School District amended policies have been written by the uh, board, board of school directors and have been reviewed by the superintendent and solicitor. Each board member has reviewed a, a uh, I'm sorry, has received a copy of the above named policy for the review and follow up discussion as required by the district policy. Uh, the interest of the, po of the policy into the minutes um, constitutes the first reading with a second reading and adoption to take place at next public board meeting. Um, policy 103.1, non-discrimination qualified students with disabilities. Uh, the motion is to approve the first reading of the William Penn School District amended policy 103.1 and to enter such reading into the minutes. All right, and that concludes uh, the policy committee agenda. Um, also, I'm just going to suggest all board of directs make sure that you read um, policy 103.1 since it is the first reading. Make sure you take the opportunity to make sure you review that. Any questions from the public? All right, no board members have any questions. It doesn't look like that. All right, so we'll go to the new business. So new business is the name change of Pinwood High School Cypress Street campus to establish a ninth grade academy. Reorganization plans for the William Penn School District includes reestablishing a true, a true ninth grade academy at the current Pinwood High School Cypress Street campus effective July 1st, 2022. The motion is to approve the name of Pinwood High School Cypress Street um, campus to the ninth grade academy, housing only uh, grade nine students effective with the 2022-2023 school year. Um, our uh, second as well as well, it, um, the second part is the election of um, intermediate unit board members. Uh, the board has used a request to elect members of the Delaware County Intermediate Unit number 25 board of directors uh, nominations have been closed and it would be appropriate for the board to take action to elect the board members listed below for the terms indicated uh, we had fred green uh, from chester upland edward harris from interboro bradley moore um, from bradner township uh, uh, christine mcmanaman uh, from ridley and Cherie Monroe from Southeast Delco. The motion is to approve the resolution electing uh, the, above, the above list of individuals to serve as members of the Delaware County Intermediate Union, Unit uh, Number 25 Board of Directors. Um, board of Directors at this time, is anyone, um, is anyone familiar with any of these uh, candidates uh, listed? Um, I know Bradley Moore and he's, he's pretty great. Okay. Um, I'm very uh, sensitive to equity. Sensitive to equity. Yeah, so, okay. but I would ask: um, Would it be possible to get uh, resumes or anything that these folks filled out um, in our packet before we vote um, next week? Definitely. Um, we can reach out. They didn't. Know, they didn't send anything, but yeah. we can reach out see what they have. Yeah, that would be great. And maybe right. join us. Maybe she has something. Yeah. For Okay, yes, she probably could add more with this. Yeah. I know um, Cherie Monroe from uh, Southeast Delco. Cherie Monroe. Yeah, from she's a, Delco. Uh, yeah, she's a um, long standing member with the intermediate unit. She is diverse and also she um, she attended the church that I attend, First African Baptist Church in Sharon Hill. Okay, all right. Did you have a question? Regarding number one? Yes, definitely. I was just wanted to bring that. Okay, so a board of directs with regard to. Um, Number one and number two, did anyone have any questions under our new business for item number one or two? So we'll start with Ms. Richardson. Oh, you said the renaming of the 
Cypress Street is would it be Penwood Ninth Grade Academy? Because it just says Ninth Grade Academy. It would be Penwood Ninth Grade Academy. Okay. Mr. Collinhead, do you no. have any questions? Can you tell your phone yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was um, the question I had um, is, is that uh, first and foremost, I like the fact that we're Ninth Grade Academy because I think it um, puts more of a, a spin um, on the school itself. Um, also, just the naming itself helps with branding. But the point I wanted to make is, is that um, not necessarily what are we going to do different, but what was the name, the reason for the name change? Why go with the academy? What was the ultimate decision? Two things. Um, one, um, research around ninth grade academies and what that model calls for. And I believe uh, previously uh, it was the ninth grade academy um, here in the district. And so when you um, talk about ninth grade academies, there are various components that, that you should have in place. Some of that information was shared with the board on the 8th in, um, in the research that I have provided. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that just from my experiences this, what last year, um, with going back and forth between the two sites, um, looking at some things that are in place, I firmly believe that the academy model um, would benefit our students. Um, I did have a conversation with the entire staff at the high school uh, one morning and talked about us going back or uh, implementing this model again. Uh, there were no negative concerns. A lot of people did talk about the positive aspects of having a ninth grade academy. And so those are some of the uh, reasons why I wanted to move forward. I'm recommending that we move forward. Uh, with this, and I also think that it is very challenging for one administrator to manage two high school buildings. Um, I, I just think that's a challenge. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, and it'll be solely just all ninth graders tonight. Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Tom, do you have any questions? Yeah, just a couple. Uh, I just have two, I guess, part of his follow up. Uh, one is, um, with the name change, there's nothing uh, that the that's going to change with the state. Just the name change. We will so, be working with the state. We've already been in conversation with the state, and so we are following their process before the state will approve um, any name change or, as they call it, reconfiguration. You have to have a um, board-approved uh, instrument, and that would be our motion that shows that the board did approve it and a letter from the superintendent. So that's why we're starting with this in April. The board, um, I'm sorry, the state opens up their process on May 1st. We have been in contact with the state. So we are just working toward that date. Uh, it is our understanding that we would not have, there would not be any concerns with this moving forward successfully with the state. Okay, and the second would be a follow-up on something you shared a moment ago, um, leadership, Will there be a leadership change at um, Ninth Grade Academy? What, what, what would the leadership structure look like, I guess? So the leadership structure would include a dedicated principal and an assistant principal at the Ninth Grade Academy to support this model. And we will be bringing additional information about the dedicated principal back to the board shortly. Thank you. Uh-huh. You're welcome. Um, I, I am in total agreement with Academy. Okay. Um, that's originally how it was set up. Does this this does mean you will have to have a permanent principal there because it is its own school? Do they also uh, make us have its own clubs and its own sports? I don't think. No, the the sports piece will be a part of the whole okay. high school component, okay. nine through twelve. Okay. Clubs and things of that nature. That will be something the state does not mandate us to do okay. anything we will be working that out between the administrations i think there are going to be some things that naturally we would want to have just dedicated for the ninth grade right. academy to make it a real true robust model but and then there may be some opportunities for us to do some um, interchange and this new position is reflected in our budget that we're currently reviewing yes it will be okay yep most definitely I have one right. other, but it escapes right. me, so I'll be back. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Um, once again, Dr. Peacock, I commend you for this. I believe this has been a problem out through the years that we have principals 
working for two schools, and some of them had either re retire or they resign. Would this be something permanent that we would do that we would just have a principal and a system system principal at these schools so don't have just one person going back and forth to two schools? That would be my recommendation. I will share with you. This is the first district that I've ever worked in where you've had a principal that's split between two buildings. Um, so this, this, my this, recommendation would be that this would be permanent and we will move you. forward with this. Um, depending upon what happens with our budget, and I have been in conversations with some of our state uh, elected officials, we are hopeful that we will see some increase um, this year. Um, well, for next year, I should say. Um, and so hopefully that will assist us in moving forward with, with, some, yeah. with some of these items on a more long-term basis. I have one more question, but it's going back to uh, lecture two. I know um, the president of Ridley School, so I'll be able to call that individual and find out and get some information on Christine. Christina, I can't pronounce I can't pronounce the name. Yeah, Ms. Medeman. Yes, yeah, so I'll be. I'll do that either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, contact and so maybe you can send some information to us. All right. Oh, oh yep. I'm All sorry. right. Thank you, Mr. Wright. You welcome, Jen. Um, Dr. Picos, the tweeners, the the young folks that for some reason don't pass their ninth grade classes. This this says ninth grade only, but if a student needs it, right, is in between. We want to do what's best for the student. Yeah. That's that always has to be our yeah. focus, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Um, Board of Directs on Zoom, do you have any questions? I just have a comment. Um, and that is Joy uh, sent a message that um, all of those uh, who have been put forth um, are good candidates um, from her experience with the DCIU board. Um, and then personally, I'm a product of a ninth grade academy. And so I'm very biased <laughs> on the um, benefits that come from that experience. So I'm excited to hear that um, we are moving back um, to that experience for the William Penn School District. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Val, for your feedback. Um, Ms. Ivory, do you have any uh, feedback either? No, I do not. All right. Um, anyone from the public? Oh, wait, I have a hand raised. Let me go. Does anyone see the hand raised? Yes. Yes. This is Afia Lewis. Oh, hello. Ms. I just want to. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. I just wanted to, um, as I look and read the motion, um, when it stated that it would be, uh, when Dr. Biko stated that it would go, to, it would say Penwood Ninth Grade Academy. I just wanted to ask if that word is, if those two words are added in the motion, so then we don't have to go back in, again to make sure that the motion is stated correctly. So if it's changing from Penwood High School, Cypress Street Campus, if it's changing to Penwood Ninth Grade Academy, those words should be added in the motion so this motion doesn't have to be, so we don't have to vote again in the future to add the words Pinwood. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. We're, uh, I did write that down and we're gonna make a note so that that can be modified. Thank you. All right, so at this time, um, are there any uh, non-agenda related items um, that anyone from the public may have any comments okay sure you you have a few. can you come to the mic so that people yes. on the zoom they need to hear you <laughs> it's miss M um M Michelle, right and Michelle. Michelle. Um, in regards to the principal for the ninth grade academy, does that mean you're going to have to interview some people for this position? That process has uh, taken place. It's been underway. Okay. And we did open an internal only application process initially to give okay. individuals in the district an opportunity to apply. I got you. Thanks. All right. Is that the only question that you had? Yep. All right. Well, thank you for uh, uh, some. I do have another question, but go ahead. Why do we elect the board? 
would have been had the elective in the DCIU board members? Um, because we work with the DCIU. We use them for a lot of our resources. Um, so it's important for us to kind of know who the board of directs are that are also maintaining that as well, just because we work with them. Okay. Um, are any, the, any board of directs have any non-agenda related uh, comments or questions at this time? All right, so board of directors, I'm just going to urge you once again, please call one another and communicate. I'll be doing that as well, calling and getting feedback. Um, once again, we have a lot on our plate with this decision with regard to our schools and the renovations. So let's work to the, together to be able to get a motion passed um, by our next business meeting. So we do know our next board meeting, um, property meeting, is May 3rd. Um, so we want you know, to be able to get this passed in our next uh, board business meeting. So thank you everybody tonight for your time. And this meeting is adjourned. Can I get a second? So, <laughs> so, <laughs>